Hello, so this is going to be an interesting series that I want to start uh, on Lumber Tycoon 2. This is inspired by the man himself who taught me how to code, Heath Haskins. He's also like the best Lumber Tycoon 2 YouTuber. So I wanted to take some inspiration with this series here and just have a nice calming playthrough because as some of you might know, I am pretty calm, typically. There are instances where I can get riled up, but I like to be calm and I like to talk about a lot of random things, so I feel like this would be a really good opportunity here. Uh, so I've gone ahead here and just joined the game. I'm going to be starting from scratch, because I there's no point in starting from like data size 10, and all these are just useless. Uh, one of these is, is a cooperative playthrough, I can't remember which. Uh, but, might as well get started here with the basic hatchet. Now, one little, like, thing that I'm going to note here is that I am going to buy myself the building power once I buy all the slots on a base plate. The reason why is because, let's be real, the $10 million to buy it legitimately in-game is insanely difficult to get. Uh... I managed to get the 10 million on my main base plate without, like, glitching or duping or any of that stuff. I just sold stuff to people. Like, I would basically run, uh, limited Halloween pumpkins and stuff to people. And it would sell for quite a lot. So that's how I got my 10 million there, just basically being a, a shopping cart. Being somebody's Uber Eats, basically. Is there a gap there? I don't think the road was floating, but it's not. But... That being said, I don't want to have to spend the months doing that this time, so once I get all the, the uh, land upgrades, I'm just going to buy myself the build power with the Robux Game Pass. So it's, I still have to work for it, but it's going to be a little more feasible to attain, because let's be honest, to be able to get that build power with the 10 million, that is a massive pain. So the goal right now, speaking of land, is just to get my first plot. So, I'm just gonna cut down some trees. I might I might actually go over here and snag that big oak tree over there if I can. Not oak, but whatever that is. See if I can't get that over there to the drop off and just make a ton from it. Actually, these big trees over here, they actually sell for the least per unit uh, out of all the trees in game. If it's not the least, it's one of the least. But. Since they're so big, they can still get you quite a bit of money, because it's not like it's substantially uh, less valued than just the regular oaks. I think I'm going to take this piece. Let's see, can I carry it or am I going to have to fling it? Also, if my voice sounds kind of weird, it's because I've been sick. Um, if any of you are curious, uh, <laughs> I have no idea what it is. I'm going to be getting myself tested here soon for just like a whole bunch of things. So I got to shift lock off just to kind of figure out what it is. We haven't quite nailed down what it is, but... Did my game crash? Uh-oh. What's happening in the tree here? There we go. We haven't nailed down what it is entirely yet, but it's not coronavirus. We know that for sure. And it's probably a virus due to the fact that my fever does not seemed to yield very well to medication until recently. Uh, I went I went about like two days for the solid fever of like 101 to 103. Luckily, I'm fine now, but my throat also really hurts. So if my voice is all messed up, that's why. Also, this tree is really causing me some issues. I doubt that guy driving into it is helping though. <laughs> oh, it's been a while since I've, like, seriously played this game. Uh, yeah, I used to play this a lot back in, like, 2016 until about 2019, I guess, is what I'll just spitball there. Used to play it with a bunch of friends and stuff, we'd all just try to make a ton of money, buy the build power, just do a bunch of crazy build projects. That was great. And now I have to deal with the mounting responsibilities of becoming a young adult. 
uh, of course, things like applying for colleges and applying for scholarships, uh, working, school, because I am a lifeguard. If any of you are watching don't know that already, I am a lifeguard, so I have to work. <laughs> and I have school, public in-person school. Uh, so it's pretty good, though. I mean, I don't know many high schools that'll teach you Calculus 3, but that's a class I'm taking, and I, I love it. It's a pretty fun class. Uh, but yeah, just the responsibilities are mounting, and I don't have as much time to play games anymore, sadly. And of course, there are also... There's also my personal life that I need to manage as well so I don't go clinically insane, because you can't just work yourself to death. You have to give yourself breaks. That's human psychology. Basic human psychology. You can't just work forever. You have to have some relaxation. If you work yourself too hard, you get into a really bad mental state. Dang, this tree is being a little, uh, a little funky here. But once I can finally angle it, basically my goal is to get that, that root, I guess is what I'll call it, into there. So I just need to keep filling with it until it finally decides to land on the conveyor belt. And then from there, because like I could chop it up, right? But watch this. Once I get this working, you'll see it just saves a lot of time. Like this. I can probably work with this. Yep. All right. Watch this. Watch this. This is really a... Uh, it's a big brain play. I forgot where I learned this from. Oh, I learned it from a glitch. Come on. This thing, I know it wants to get in here. Actually, there's probably a part sticking. Yep, hold on. If I cut this... I know the whole goal is to prevent cutting it into pieces because the basic hatchet is terrible, but... It'll still be worth it. Because I'm only cutting once. And yeah, the basic hatchet is... That is really awful. <laughs> oh my goodness. I never really paid attention as to how bad the basic hatchet is. You know, another funny similarity, actually. Um, not really, I wouldn't really say it's a similarity, but I find it also funny because I also took inspiration for, like, game development from Keith Haskins. So it's like, there's a lot of inspiration that singular guy has put on me. And I think it's pretty cool. There we go. You can kind of just sell it all like this, piece by piece. No chopping required, except for that first one, but I technically could have found a way to gotten around that if I really wanted to, I guess. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why these pieces are struggling so hard to just move. Like, see this? I, I mean, I would think it's server lag, but... The guy with the most money only has $573, so I doubt he has like a million items on this base. Furthermore, I mean, yeah, like, look, there's a base over there. I don't have a base. And that other guy might also not have a. Might. He might also not have a base. I can't speak. I don't know why my just. speaking abilities are so trash. Yeah, look, look at this. It's like all frozen and stuff. I don't know why. It's like I have to chop it. I mean, honestly, what could be the case is that it's technically not my tree, because I just found it all pre-cut, and I guess whoever cut it originally left. Or maybe it was that other guy ramming into me, and that's why he was ramming into me, because he was mad I stole part of his tree. Um, actually, was that the case? No, that's, that's still there. But, that's my guess. It's technically not my wood. I wasn't the one who cut it down originally, so maybe that's why it's freaking out. But if I cut it here, it seems to want to, I guess, regain my authority? I don't know. <laughs> I will say, Lumber Tycoon 2 isn't really the best game for, like, co-oping. Uh, it sounds like it would be, and it would be, but the main issue is just the way it's, like, set up with, like, client siting and all that stuff, so if you get... If you have somebody whitelisted, and they put their wood in your truck, the truck will start glitching and flinging the wood everywhere because it's just some client server mechanics. So it gets really funky, so it's like, it would be fun, but it's almost impractical to do, unfortunately. 
Alright, well as you can see, despite those big trees being the least, like, profitable per unit, I still gained, like, $500 from it, so... I'm just gonna go over here, buy an axe, buy some land. Start getting myself set up here. Let's see, 550, ooh. Actually, I think I'm gonna go steal another one of those pieces and just save up for that hardened axe. Go big or go home, alright? Get, can get as much as I can here for my money and this tree. Let's see. Oh, it's still gonna be kind of difficult to move though. The, oh well. So, while I was working summer camp, there was like, summer camp as in summer camp lifeguarding, uh, basically we would have, our Y had this program called like the Y summer camp where kids, I think it was like up to 6th grade, could sign up, well I guess the parents signed them up and the parents would just go do whatever they do when they send their kids away for a full day. Uh, and it was like, it was a weekly thing, as in like, more like 5 days a week for the whole summer, and basically these kids would go and just do some fun activities, and three out of those five days, they would go to the pool for a few hours. And that's when we had, like, a bunch of lifeguards on duty, because there's so many kids in the pool. And... A lot of crazy things happen there, because you have everywhere between kindergartners and sixth graders coming into that pool, so... We had a few instances of kids puking, we had... Oh, it's just weird. Some of the kids are also kind of weird, but... <laughs> That's how they are, they're just kids having fun. Uh, one thing, too, that was kind of notable in my mind, was that some of these kids just seemed to not have any... any basic idea of safety. I mean, I can't remember if I had any basic idea of safety when I was around that age, but I feel like I did, because... One thing's for certain, when I was like 10, I was not doing flips into the three, three foot deep water. I realized that that was not a smart idea. Uh, but yet these kids were here, flipping into the three foot deep water, nearly hitting their heads on both the sides of the pool and the bottom of the pool. Um, needless to say, they got, they got yelled at. I didn't have the courage to do it myself, so another one of the lifeguards did it, because there were literally six of us on duty. <laughs> but yeah, that was... um. That was interesting. Oh wow, I got more money from that than I thought I would. I wonder what kind of wood that is. I can't tell if that's like from way over there. No, that because the wood over there is kind of red. I think he got it from across the bridge, not from uh, across the ferry. I've kind of forgotten the name of the woods, uh, at least some of the basic woods. I know the advanced ones, but like, I kind of forgot. Alright, land time. Oh, I gotta... I gotta save to a slot real quick. Whoops. I'll just save it to six, that way it's like at the very bottom. Alright. Now, one of the goals of this series is gonna be to have a bridge to both Goldwood and Palmwood. Because I've never had a bridge to Palmwood, like, via door bridge glitch, and I really want to do that. Palmwood is, like, so elusive in my mind. It just seems, like, odd. I don't know why. Actually, this is not an ideal spot. See, this is where you would go for, like, a Goldwood bridge, this spot right here. Uh, but, considering I'm not in that position to make one of those bridges, I'm just going to go to the closest one to WoodRS, which is going to be... I want to get that one over there in the corner. There we go. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it, it, it is just right across from there, but... Oh well. Close enough, I guess. Alright, so... Now, I need a car and a sawmill, which is probably going to prevent me from being able to buy that $550 hardened axe, but... If it does, oh well. Let's see... 130 and a car is what, like 300? 400. So that's 430. And that would definitely take me out of the running for a hardened axe, but 
it's probably worth it, honestly. So I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna snag this. In a recent update, they actually made it so you can buy multiple things at once. Which is super convenient. Oh, it's 5.30. Did I say 4.30 earlier? I don't think I was thinking. Oh well. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna zoom out and just snipe this. Over there. <laughs> and I'll just get the car. Um, and I'll just drag it. So, just curious. What responsibilities do you guys have? You should write down in the comments what responsibilities you guys have to deal with, because I'm curious. Because, like, I'm over here with, like, college stuff and college tests, scholarships, prep, work, all that stuff. What responsibilities do you guys have? I'd like to hear that. Just to see how you guys are doing. And, of course, if any of you guys want to, you can feel free to join in the games when I do it. I, I personally have my follows off right now because... I'm sick, and I, I don't want to have to go through a lot of effort communicating to people, and it'd, it'd be kind of a mess on my end. So, I'm just kind of keeping it chill as of late, um, but that's going to be subject to change in a couple of days when I start feeling fully well. I really like the new building, like, grid thing. It wasn't so, like, fluid before. Alright. So, let me move this so it's more proper. I think before I buy an upgraded axe, I'm just going to cut down a tree and just process it and see how much money I get from that. Oh, I forgot how much the basic hatchet is just trash. <laughs> no. It's fine, though. Is the server okay here? Oh. Oh, it's just literally balanced. It wasn't even lag, it was just balanced. That's actually... that's pretty cool. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys are gonna get that reference. Honestly, considering my, my demographic, you probably shouldn't get that reference. I know, uh... I know, I know that one of you specifically, if you're watching this, will get that reference. But I know most of you are quite young, and I don't think you should be getting that reference if, if you did. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit more of a mature... Uh, it comes from a mature cartoon, I guess is what we'll say. I personally find it hilarious, but... It's still not... It's not the best, if, if some of you guys understand that, probably. Let's see, I don't know why the sawmills always like default to one-by-ones. I mean, most of the... I guess it's because everything in this game is just based off of, like, unit-by-unit unit type beat. Like, a unit of wood is what they use for, like, determining cell rates, and a unit is just one stud. So I guess that's probably why. I really like how that is, though. It's just, like, a stud is a unit. I kind of like that. The stud is, like, the universal Roblox measuring system. Measurement of, uh, length, I guess. Does that mean if you were doing volume and, like, area, you would have cubic units and squared units? Actually, hold on. If you were doing volume, though, like, let's say this was, like, let's say this had a unit of four volume, or, oh my goodness, sorry, I cannot speak. Let's say this had a volume of four studs. Would that make this four studs cubed, or just four studs? Because, like, a stud is, like, one by one. So if, if volume is just studs, then what would area and then just length be? Would it still be studs? Because that would make that would mean that studs were like measurements of volume. Kind of like liters, for example. Liters are measurements of volume, but they're not like liters cubed or liters squared, it's just liters. 
some interesting mathematical debates. You're probably going to be hearing a lot of those in these videos, unfortunately. Some of you know that that's just how I am, though. I won't be talking about anything too crazy, though, don't worry. I may like math, but I'm not going to be obnoxious about it. Alright. After this tree, I should be able to get that hardened axe. Now, my goal also is to keep these uploads, like, daily. Another thing I've learned is that consistency is pretty good for channel growth as well. In the words of my band director, here we grow. <laughs> Just like these trees. Oh, is this even going to fit? Oh no, it will. And if it doesn't, I know a glitch technique to get slightly larger uh, logs than the actual size of the sawmill to fit in there. Might be too long though. Nope. <coughs> Sorry about that. Remember, I am still kind of sick. But I really did want to play Lumber Tycoon too, so... I went ahead and incorporated it here. Let's see... Just gotta get these pieces in here. One of my, like, starter goals is definitely to get a good sawmill setup here. With a good unloading setup, a good loading setup, a good sawmill for starters. Uh, just, yeah, machinery like that. Just all hooked up. Also, I don't know why, but I keep saying, uh, a lot, and it's kind of, it's a little bit annoying on my end, because I want to just be able to talk freely without being so confused. But I feel like without that delay, I start stumbling over my words. Because I really do stumble over my words a lot, and I don't know why. I just can't do English properly. Like, yes, I'm not fully American, but... English was my first language, so I really don't have an excuse for it. And these logs are really like swinging around. Imagine I get a pink car in one of these episodes accidentally. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, the odds are just like 1 in 500, I think. Which isn't that bad in reality. Especially for one of these cars, which is $8 to respawn, so if we're talking just purely statistically here, if it's $8, or if it's $8 for a respawn and 500 respawns to get a pink car, statistically speaking, it can happen anywhere before or anywhere after. Um, still though, that is going to be $1,600 for a pink car, if I did my math correctly there. Did I do my math correctly? I did 8 times 100, which is 800, yep. Wait, hold on, no, I didn't do it right. It's 8 times 100 times 5, which is 800, it's 4,000, whoops. 4,000 for a pink car, which isn't really that bad, statistically speaking. Of course, it can happen anywhere before that, it could be anywhere after that. You could get yourself a pink car for $8, or you can end up getting yourself a pink car for like 50 grand. <laughs> Either one can happen, as unlikely as they are. Now we're making some good money here. Ooh, I might be able to get like the next tier up from Pardon Dax. We'll have to see though. Oh, did somebody leave their basic hatchet? Oh, that error guy left his basic hatchet. The one who was like driving into my tree earlier. Technically it wasn't my tree, but I mean, <laughs> nobody else claimed it, so. Alright, so we have the Steel Axe, or the Plain Axe. Hardened Axe is 550. Oh, does it really just go from 550 to the 2000? Yeah. Well, Hardened Axe it is, for now. Soon I'll get the Ripper Eye, though. Thank you, Tom, for selling me the Hardened Axe. Oh, one minute. Sorry about that, guys. My mom came in, and we were gonna get me tested for stuff, but 
The only benefit really from that is just getting an excuse note from school, but my absences are already excused, so there's no point in really finding out what I have, honestly. Because <laughs> either way, it's just going to be either cold or flu or something, so not really worth my time. That being said, though, seeing as we're 25 minutes into this recording, I'm going to go ahead and end this first love episode here with my hardened axe and sawmill and car and just all that stuff. And this hopefully will be like a daily series, because I don't have to edit or anything. It's going to be a non-edited series, so hopefully I can keep it going daily, maybe go up and get those lava trees up there sometime, but we'll see how it goes tomorrow. And bye, y'all.